Welcome back to Silver Run Forest on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 30 with me, Mr. Sealy P. We're back and I wasn't intending to do this, but I'm north of Field 3 on that big open pasture on the quite steep hillside where I put the wood production in in the last episode. I've been out with the hydraulic breaker, I've been through so far clearing out a load of rocks so, yeah the rocks so what I'm doing now is going around and grabbing up the stones to load into a trailer take those down to my line production um, what I am probably going to do at this point is use I think I'm going to use a wood chipper to get rid of all the smaller trees and the bigger trees I'm going to cut down for lumber and I'm going to put those up to the wood production um, that we put in in the last episode. That at least is the plan for the moment. Um, <laughs> I'll see in a little while, see how we get on. You know me, once I start doing something I get hooked. It's just gone lunchtime here in in on Silver Run Forest. I'm on my hillside, up where my new wood production is. I forgot to say yesterday, the wood production supplied and installed by Nikki. It's in the description. I put some more of these trees around the outside, some different size ones as well. Just again to shield it, make it a little bit nicer. So I have been busy. Now I've been doing a combination of one, I think I I think I might put some footage in, I can't remember now. Um, I've been using the hydraulic breaker for any rocks I've come across, and there were some rocks up across that side. I've been using the 
Devourer, which is on my John Deere, where's that over there somewhere, for taking out the stumps. But I've also been using the Devourer for small trees. So any small trees in between all the larger ones that I wanted to use for lumber, I've been using that for wood chipping. So wood chipping and stump removal I've been doing. So as you can see, we've cleared a fair bit. This I'm going to be making into a field, same as I did down there. Um, this is going to be a cornfield. It's going to be hilly, it's going to be steep up the top end. So we're going to do hillside corn. And it's going to be a, a pretty big field actually. So there's a couple of things I need to buy at this point. Well, not necessarily at this point, but I need to buy before I move on. I've got my plough, which I'm going to carry on with, no problem at all. Um, I mean, it's a big field, it's going to take me a little while, but I'm going to use the one I've got. I did think about upgrading it, but I'm all right with what I've got. Um, I'm going to get a lime spreader. I've been leasing that one that I've used, uh, which was under trailers, wasn't it? And it was one that you convert over from a trailer to the FarmTech 40s. It's 35,000 litre, it works quite well. It's got a good spread width of 24 metres. And it will do lime or fertiliser. Um, this is all going to need liming because it's going to be a brand new field. There wasn't a field here before. So I'm clearing up here as well. And I've got, I'm sort of trying to do it in stages really. Only because of game crashes. It's been getting quite bad. And I've, I'm still living in fear of that one where you go to save the game and it just won't do it. It hasn't happened yet. I've had a couple of near misses where I've hit save and it sits and it sits and it sits and I think it's going to go, it's going to go. Um, and it's been all right so far. So as you can see, as we get up from the bottom there, here, we're getting quite steep. So this again, I haven't really done, I'm trying to think of farms that I've worked on, on here that have been particularly hilly. It's going to be an interesting one for doing corn, that's for certain. But like I say, it's going to be a nice big field. So we've got soybean corn, barley over there, sunflower on the go. So we're going to take some of this. Some of it I've been loading onto the log trailer and bringing up on the log trailer. And some of it, because I'm quite close here, I've been um, just driving up with the telehandler. It's heavy because I've got the weight of the logs and I've got the weight on the back and, you know, it gets a bit kind of lumbering sometimes and a couple of times I've done it, I thought, oh, is it easy just to load the log trailer? In all honesty, this close, it's easy doing this. So again, unrealistic, using this maybe. And what I was going to say was, um, if, you know, if you don't want to know about unrealistic things or you don't want to use unrealistic things, that's absolutely fine. But something else I was going to mention, and this came about completely by accident. If you remember in the last episode, when I drove off with the pallet of logs on the back, I'll just put these in. And I'll show you what we're looking at at the moment. We've got, I think we must be over 100,000 litres of lumber in here now, which will be disseminating. Oh, so have we gone over the hour? Oh, we have. It's already, it's already gone. Um, I had 99,000 litres. We've now got 40,000 in there. So that's obviously been disseminated. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to think where it would have gone to. Um, I'm trying, actually, you know what, my pallet production, I wonder if it's gone, a lot of it's gone there. On the hour, but it's working, that's the main thing. Oh, that's the North Sawmill. That's my sawmill. Oh yeah, look, uh, 191,000 litres. I was on 150, no, 146 because I'd used some. So yeah, a whole load of it's gone there to my plank production. So I could make an absolute ton of money doing that. So yeah, it's working. I'm putting the logs in here. So yeah, the, the byproduct being, or that happy accident, if you want to call it that. If you get the Jeep, if you're using it, the Lizard XJ, it has got an auto load option if you want to go for the auto load option. You open the boot and it will auto load and it will do pallets and stuff. What I was going to do, I've got a load of strawberries that I need to take and deliver. It will do that, no problem at all. So it's, you're just loading them into the back like you would do loading anything else. It works really well. But I obviously drove past my Devourer. That's by Rowland Christie 1 which had wood chips in it. And in driving past, the wood chips transferred from the devourer into the Jeep. That's what the 30,000 litres of wood chips, that's where they came from. It was out of the devourer. 
and I, it was just a guess. And in our last episode, I said, oh, I wonder if that's what's happened. You know, that's the only thing I could think of. I've driven past it and it's gone in. So then I did it on purpose, and it did. It transferred the wood chips over, um, which is mad. So I've made, as you can see, the money's gone up. I've done some wood chip deliveries, wood chip from around here. So all the small fields I've been wood chipping, small fields, all the small trees I've been wood chipping. Um, but also I've taken, did I do one or two loads? I think I did a couple of loads from down at my silo where I've got all the wood chips stored from last time. So I'm pretty sure now wood chips there, we're down to under 600,000. We had 1.2, 1.3 million, didn't we? I'm trying to think how much we had now. Uh, wood chips, what we got? 673,000, yeah, so we've, we've delivered quite a few. So our money's up. Well, the first thing I'm going to do now, we need a planter. And I was thinking of looking through... Actually, I might still do that. You know what? I was going to get one of the Kinsey ones. I'm going to have a look and see what's available in the brochure. I think that's the best bet. And the same with... I, I probably will buy that lime spread, the farm tech, because it's the one I've been using. Um, oh, the other thing I'm going to do, though, because I've been doing some manual fertilising as well as doing manure spreading, muck spreading, I'm going to get... I tell you what I did do, and I tried it. I got the TR500 fertilizer distributor because I had the seed one. I bought that because it was nice and cheap. Six grand, 800 liters, which isn't a huge capacity, and it spreads to 12 meters. Again, not a very big spread width. But if you're looking to spread manual fertilizer, manual fertilizer, uh, solid fertilizer, and you're on a bit of a budget, if you get that, which works really well. And then if you go for, if you go to planters, if you've got it installed, this is part of a pack, I think, by Giants. This one, the the Vedestat Tempo. If you get that pack by Giants and buy that for nine grand, so you're now 15,000 in. That's all, 15 grand. And that's a 2,200 litre on the front. So that gives you a 3,000 litre combined. With that on the front and the other on the back, you can spread solid fertilizer nice and cheaply. It's, it's a good way of doing it. So I did that. I've got one of those and I've got the back one, but the spread width is quite narrow. So if you're starting off, it's probably a good way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that. I've got the money to do it. So I'm going to buy that. And I'll sort out my muck spreader or lime spreader because I want it predominantly lime. But if it does lime and manure, that's absolutely brilliant. And we're going to get a planter because this is all going to need to be planted. So I'm going to need to plough all this and then we're going to lime it because I've got a funny feeling it's going to need liming. And then uh, I'm going to get some hillside corn planted. Not that's a particular thing, but it's. Yeah. I'm more interested in how it's going to be when we come to harvest it. That's more what I'm thinking. But... So yeah, um, this was another one of those ones I thought... It's kind of getting to a point... If thumbnails aren't sensational, if, the, if, if what you're doing is not sensational, or something new... Um, I don't know, it's a bit weird. I, I can't... I don't want to just keep doing an episode where I'm using a brand new bit of kill. I mean, I will be if I use a new seed or one I haven't used before planter sorry so we are going to be planting um, but this is one of those ones all this work I was going to do off camera and I thought the problem is this is going to take me quite a long time and it might mean if I if I don't I won't get a video up today because this is what I'll be doing but this is what I'm doing it's part and parcel of what I'm doing on the farm it's what I'm doing on the map so I thought you know what yeah we'll do it yes I've made fields before but I haven't done planting I've done seeding I haven't done them on a steep hillside like this for quite some time, if at all. Like I said, I'm trying to think of a map where I've done a hill like this. So uh, I'll see you in a bit when I'm ready to start ploughing. Got a few more trees to cut down there. And we're having ourselves a nice big field. I think we've got about, about five or six left to cut over here. I mean, I could keep going and have it right up there. But I think where I'm at now, I've got a nice open space here that goes out to the edge. There's a little cluster of trees there. Those are the ones that I'm going to take out and then I'm going to start ploughing, I think. Right, I think we're ready for the next step. I have had a look in the brochures of various different things. 
I think I'm going to stick with, with what I kind of originally had in my head. The, um, where are we? I'm going to go for the same, I'm going to buy this anyway, for muck spreading and um, for liming. Simply because I've had a look at, there's various different options. There are all sorts of options. If you go under fertilizer spreaders, there's fertilizer spreaders that do fertilizer and lime. Um, and then if you go under muck spreaders, there's muck spreaders that do muck and lime. So this has got a larger capacity than a fair few of them. The large capacity at 35,000 litres coupled with um, a 24 metre spread width. So you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, I want it with manure spreaders because I'm going to be doing lime. I'm going to keep tyres, chassis. I'm going to keep everything the same, I think. So we're going to buy that first. Um, now, the one I just bought, coupled with that rear one I was just saying about, so that's the front tank I bought. That is the seed version, but I, I just had the fertiliser version. So that's what I've just bought. Now, this will do fertiliser and lime. So I could do it from this, and that will take lime as well, I think. At the moment it's got fertiliser, or is it fertiliser and seed? I think that's fertiliser and seed. So I could do liming from that, but you know what? Because that does muck spreading and lime, we're golden. Next thing I want to get... Uh, I don't know if I lease this or buy it. I think I'm going to lease it, um, because I don't think I'm going to need it moving forward. But because it's going to be a fairly large field... Now, I've got that already, the 9 metre. I was going to go with that, the John Deere 2410, which I've used a few times before, 16.7 metres. Or we've got these, the Lizard SM72 and SM82 uh, Agro Tonio. I'm going to go with the 22. I don't think I want a 26 metre. Uh, don't, don't want to attach this. No, I'm just going to plough. Um, so I'm going to lease that. And then the other thing we're going to do is, I'm going to buy a planter or lease a planter. Yeah, we'll buy one. Our intentions are, even if we don't stay here for years and years and years and years, and years we're going to put, you know, um, future generations can use it. I think I'm just going to go for that. 12 metres wide. That's 12 metres wide as well, but a little bit more expensive. That one, the Kinsey Blue Drive Direct Drills. Um, seed and fertiliser. I'm fertilising separately, so I'm, I'm not too bothered about the fact it doesn't seed and fertilize there's a few different options there's that one as well does seed and fertilizer at 18.2 i looked at the 1775 as well 17.8 and i thought you know what that will do me that's absolutely fine don't want a number plate on it so let's buy that so, muck and lime spreader, plough, and our new planter. I need to start with the ploughing first. Let's get the fields done. If I come across any stumps, I've still got the devourer up there, so I can get rid of these stumps as we go. Just thinking, do I need any weight on the front of this? The thing I was thinking, do I change the tyres on this? I didn't mention, or did I mention, that I changed from tracks to tyres because I found when I was doing that hillside, when I was grassing it, the tracks didn't sit flat and um, I, I wanted them to sit flat and, and, they, and it was hampering how, was it, no, it wasn't when I was seeding, what was I doing, was it when I was doing the ploughing? The plough wouldn't sit in the ground properly because the tracks were a bit of a funny angle. So what I'm going to do now is change over, I might put twins on it or something hmm. yeah we'll have a look that'll do nicely just thinking since we're going to be pulling quite a wide plough and stuff and we're going to be on a hillside stability etc Is it? That is a big unit, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I can't be able to get there. I just suddenly thought maybe this should be on a trailer. I'm not even sure 
I'm going to get across the bridge with this. I didn't even think of that. I might need to switch it to a trailer. Yeah, this is going to be a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> it's probably very good for big open maps with big open fields. at least get to the bridge and see if the trouble is if any traffic comes I've had it. Probably should have the beacon on. Not that I'll make a huge amount of difference. We are right in the middle of the road. Can we get across this bridge? This reminds me of watching the Welker Farms videos where they take their planters, oh no, it's not going to go, is it? Um, out across, and they go over the bridges, over the the interstate, I think it's the interstate, and it's so tight, they have to raise and lower, was it with the headers? I'm trying to think, but they have to raise and lower the ends, I think it might be the headers, on the harvesters and stuff, they have to, yeah, raise them at certain ends just to get them past certain parts of the bridges, it's incredible, right, okay, that's going to be a problem. Um... I don't know what to do now. That's annoying because I really wanted to use that. I wonder if I can pick that up with the um, with the big bag handler. And pop it on a trailer. So I can't tow it from the end, can I? Have I left the trailer down here? One of them anyway. Don't think the trailer's going to be long enough, is it? Might have to go and get the other one. Yep, we can go. See you in a minute. Let's give it a go. If it doesn't work, you'll see me up there with a different plow. I'll probably have to revert back to the John Deere one that I was thinking about doing. That's all right.
Well, with that done, <laughs> a plow with wow. We'll see, won't we? This should make fairly light work of this. I've got field stones turned off, I said that before, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm worried about stumps and the edge. I'm worried about hitting the edge over this side. So, well, okay. Maybe I should have stuck with the other one, only because it gives me a little bit more control. But I don't know. Let's turn away from the lamppost if we can. Create fields on. <laughs> Pretty cool, though. Might be a slightly odd shaped field, but that's alright. If I start to swing around, oh, yeah, you can see a stump, two stumps there. I've missed, but that's alright because I'm swinging around here anyway. Now I need to open up that. Because I'm looking down the bottom, I think I'm looking pretty much straight there. So I'm going to head up the hill here, because the edge, I'm just trying to think how far can we go that way. Yeah, I mean, that's the edge. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right on it. Straight up a little bit. There we go. No stump yet. It's a miracle. This is going to be a lot of corn, isn't it? I just sort of thought. Don't know how good the flex on this is going to be. So, with regard to. Um, any bits that are, um, they have steeper undulations, shall we say? Right, let's go to there. And we'll go an angle from there, I think. Going go across here. Follow the sweep round here. Yeah, that's I wasn't intending going that far up actually, but okay. No, I wasn't intending coming this high, but that's all right. Let's come over the top, down to the road. To about there, I think. This is crazy. I mean, it's awesome. I love it, but blimey. Turn it off now. Yeah, any bits like that. This, I mean, it's the bend. I'm trying to think of the word for it. It's just that. That arc, and that arc over that way, in any direction, whether it be convex or concave, um, this is going to be a problem for planters, going to be a problem for harvester headers, which will be having to go in slightly different directions maybe, so I'll, have to, I'll tidy that up in a little bit. It might be the only rough bit, I think. It might be alright. Should have gone a little bit better on the bend there, shouldn't I? <laughs> that we'll do, we'll check the sat nav, our overview, and see how big the field's looking compared to the other ones we've got. I think it's going to be the biggest one we've got, actually. And then we'll swing that round to... There. <laughs> That's alright, isn't it? That's not bad. Let's have a look. 
Come on, hurry up with the rest of it. No. Let's go to that. Definitely needs liming. Uh. Okay, so. It's not going to take me that long to fill in the rest anyway, is it? Actually, to be fair, I know it wasn't. I say it wasn't easy to get it here. It wasn't that bad. Had I thought about the bridge earlier, I probably would have loaded it onto the trailer straight away. And actually, it was all right. Twenty-two meters as opposed to nine. So it's all good. Right. I'll see when this is done. Uh, I might do just a little clip of me doing the liming. I was going to say about the lime. All the stones, all the rock piles off of here. And anywhere else I've been doing rock piles, I've been taking down to my lime crusher, or my stone crusher, to make lime. Every time that has filled up, and I think it's 99,000 litres it holds, I've been emptying it, or taking a load of my lorry, so about 48,000 litres, and taking it and putting it into my silo. So it should be, at the moment, just thinking, um, I still need to move some planks along down, don't I? Where are we? It turned off at the moment. Uh, there we go, lime. So yeah, 99,000, yeah, 100,000. Um, I've got plenty of water because my water distribution is going there, but stones, it filled up before I ran out of stones, which is great. And if we go to up here, and then we go down to our lime, it should tell me how much I've got stored wherever that's hidden. I do this every single time I look for lime and I go up and down. There we go. Uh, 78,000 litres. So we've got plenty of lime. 178,000 litres of it. I think I'm probably going to need to fill up the, the, um, the spreader once for doing liming. And then we'll get our new... Well, oh, we did buy it, didn't we? We didn't lease it. Yeah, we're going to get the new Kinsey out here and let's get some corn put in the ground. Because I'm making this myself, it won't have a number, obviously. So this is just going to be hilly filled. original wasn't it it took me quite a while to come up with that as well I, I went through a few different options steep hilly field hill bit down this is awesome I mean to say the 26 meter might have been too big. Is there such a thing? Yeah. Actually, what I'll do, if I carry on this direction, hopefully it'll let me do that bit. There we go. Careful, careful, careful. There we go, that'll do. Excellent. I've got 8,000 litres of seed still in my silo, so I won't have to buy any seed for the planter.
With the ploughing done and the first fertilising pass done, it's time to fill up our lime and uh, get the lime spreader over there. Right, so we have ploughed, fertilised after ploughing, limed, fertilised after lime, because the, the ground state changed it, which it allowed me to, which means, it now looks like that, these patches where I cut the grass before, these were the open meadows, and I cut the grass, so because I cut the grass, it gave me a fertilising state, so that one, those bits are already good to go. Once I've seeded, I should then be able to do the third pass. I'll probably go over the whole lot anyway again, but it'll mean using a little bit of extra fertilizer up, but it's not the end of the world. So we've got, okay, forget the Kinsey uh, 3665 Blue Drive. I think, actually, I'm not sure whether or not I need to. I'll open the covers. Will it allow me to refill, or do I need to unfold it? I tried going the other way in, uh, through the silo and it wouldn't let me, so I'm assuming I've got to unfold it. But I don't know how finicky this is going to be with this trigger or anything. That's such a cool bit of machinery. I love that. Okay. Nothing. Let's come across a bit more. There we go. Start filling. So, close tanks, fold it back up again for transportation. Let's go into the field. Go. Our two grass fields, this one here and the one. I don't know if the vehicles keep stopping there. They never did before. I haven't moved. Oh, I know what it is. I bought another toolbox. I put the toolbox in the corner. That's why the traffic keeps stopping there. Uh, right, okay, I've got an idea. Let's do that. Get rid of that. There we go, that's what it was. Go back to tools. Not that one, that one. Uh, I need to put it somewhere else. So I can still repair stuff. I'll put it on this corner, I think. There we go. Cool. I couldn't figure out why the traffic keeps stopping. I thought I, I, I hadn't moved any piece of machinery or equipment, but it was that. So peaking on again. I'm quite sure how I started okay, but...
let's get it done. So, like I said, I know I've said it. Ooh. What did I hit? There's nothing on the floor, is there? It's going too fast. Right. Um, I can't remember the last time I planted or harvested on a steep sided field. And it's weird what things pop into your mind. Um, does like sunflowers in game the heads of the sunflowers will follow the sun over the course of the day something I've never th thought about and I'm now wondering how this is going to pan out because of how steep the, the hillsides are this is going to seem a bit weird and you're probably all going to laugh and think well it's obvious isn't it right so if I've got a hillside at an angle like this right and I plant the corn will the corn grow upright so it's directly vertical towards the, the sky or will it grow at 90 degrees to the slope and grow up like that so it'll be at an angle so as the steeper the, the slope gets the, the weirder the angle is I haven't even thought about that before I'm trying to think of a map where I've been on where it's done it well, I guess we'll find out it's funny how these things pop into your head um, <laughs> I don't know what made me suddenly think of that. Right, let's unfold. Now this one is definitely going to be a shorter episode. I know that already, he says. Um, once this is done, that'll be the jobs for today. I'll then probably see you in June, I guess. I'm trying to think of anything we're ready to harvest in June. I don't think so. Let's go back to this, go to growth. These aren't on very dark green yet, so they're not going to be ready yet. My cotton or my sunflower. The other thing is, I've still been moving the wool from the sheep pen, put into my all-in-one production. Rather than producing, well, I'm still producing fabric, but rather than taking the fabric out and taking it to the boat yard at the moment, because I'm not making a boat at the moment, I've switched over to clothing. So the fabric is now making clothing. So when that's done, we should be able to take it out to, where is it here? Yeah, vintage clothes and, uh, and sell some clothes and I thought well, while, while I'm not making a boat I might as well utilize it Let's turn that on drop it down absolutely Bang. You know what I said about this being a big field? And I looked across something and this is this is a fair sized field, isn't it? It's gonna be one of the biggest ones I've got. When I looked at the map, we look at this one here. I mean it's maybe a little bit bigger than that one, but then when I looked at field two, no. And I'm pretty sure even field one might be a little bit bigger. It's longer that way, but it might be bigger. It's weird how I kind of looked and thought, mm, yeah, it's definitely a, a bigger field. The other one I was looking at possibly buying, was it here? As you come along this road here, there's a big open kind of pasture bit. It might be there. And this bit here, when you come up towards the, um, the, the iron furnace, this bit here is nice and open as well, which I thought I could maybe put something there. Again, it's just ideas moving forward on it. Like I said, I didn't go right out to the edge because I didn't want the uh, I didn't want the planter, I didn't want the um, harvester headers, anything like that that I was using to sort of catch on the edge. So I just sort of tried to stay in as best I could. I'm just pulling this up the hill right so far. Now my intention is to harvest the corn for corn. If I find I've got way more of it than I thought I would have, I might silage some of it, I don't know. There are plenty of things I could do, corn milk, that's one of the things that's available. There are loads of things that you can use corn for now as well. 
I want to use it for a feed source. That's the plan. But I still may do a temporary and interim option until it's ready to harvest. Or I was thinking once this is done, I might skip ahead a few months until I'm ready for some harvest work. That was the other option. I don't know. I'll, I'll think of. I might do both, but. We'll see. Oh, it's following the contours all right. The one bit I, that it didn't like with the ploughing was just along here, so we'll see how this goes with the sowing. Just wondering if there's a bump or a ridge or something there. No, that's all right. And then once this is done, it's going to need rolling. That end, it's not a corner really, is it? But it's, it's funny. Didn't quite get the shape of that right, did I? As ever, any bits I've missed, I will go back and do before I finish. We're close to another hour. I'm just thinking as well, how are we looking for the lumber that I put in? Oh, down here, where are we? That one, that one. Oh, yeah, I've already gone past another hour anyway. I was back up to about 90,000 litres again. That's back to 32,000. The problem I've got now is, I'm going to turn that off for a minute for a minute for a while I'm going to put it back onto storing simply because all of my productions that require it things like the paper mill and where else was it there was one of the ones in town as well are all getting it on the hour which is fine what's taking a big bulk of it is um is this is my my own sawmill not the north or the south one the one that I placed that I'm doing planks with when we checked last time, I'd gone from 140 something thousand litres to 190 thousand litres, now we're on 221 thousand litres. So, a big chunk of that lumber that's being distributed is going to that, which is not a problem. I can, I can run a load of planks off and it will give me you know, another way to make money, which is great. But I was hoping it would, I could uh, distribute things a little bit better. But unfortunately, you can't control that when you've got multiple productions running that are taking similar items. Yeah, that one's doing all right. But it's putting far more to the planks than it has to there. I guess it just does a percentage of what it takes, doesn't it? That's the that's the thing. And because the planks one takes quite a lot, um, it's going to just, yeah, it's going to take a bigger percentage, well, same percentage, but a larger amount. That makes sense, doesn't it? That's in my head. So, I've got the field done, got it all cleared. I must admit, when I first bought this plot and saw those nice two pastures and I cut the grass, my intention was just to plough those two pastures and have a kind of interestingly shaped field. It wasn't to open it all up like I have done. But that being said, I'm glad that I have. So, when I see you next, I'm not sure now. I might still go ahead maybe a couple of months, maybe two or three months. I'm just thinking sunflowers will be ready to harvest, my soybean maybe. Um, like I said, I was thinking of jumping right ahead until this is ready to harvest. I don't know. We'll see. But it won't. I, I might skip June altogether. You know what I'm like. I'll say it now. These are all possibilities. This is not set in stone. A lot of stuff I say, I might do this, I may do that, I'm thinking of doing that. Does it mean it's going to happen? It means at the moment it's a plan, um, but those plans do change. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.